Good afternoon and welcome to this meeting of the Joint Standards Committee on uh, uh, the 31st of January. Uh, I, I kind of hesitate. I think it's probably the very last day you can get away with wishing a happy new year to those that I'm seeing for the first time. Um, tomorrow will be far too late. So uh, it's good to have you with us. And uh, uh, again, for those that are watching either live or on catch up, uh, welcome to this afternoon's meeting. Um, just uh, going through the agenda, um, the first point of the agenda is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? Councillor Fisher. Thank you, Chair. Um, page 8, item 14, the Code of Conduct complaint. Uh, I was one of the councillors involved in that Code of Conduct complaint. Could I just point out that we have the council has to... Sorry, apologise. Um, I was involved in that, um, and I would just like to say that the issue has been fully updated at the Council of Concern to ensure that corruption uh, policy is now fully compliant with YLCA and National Association of Local Council Rules. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so did I see another hand there? No. No. Can I also just um, remind uh, members of the confidential nature of the pink papers, please, if we are ever going to discuss any cases that are listed, uh, please do not mention names uh, or anything that might give away the identity of either the complainant or the complainee um, in, whilst we're in our public, uh, public meeting. But just a, a reminder of that. Um, item number two on the agenda is exclusion of press and public. And uh, uh, in accordance with the rules and regulations that you've listed there, um, there are certain items uh, on the agenda that I believe will need to be uh, held privately and we will need to uh, exclude press and public. Um, so for those confidential items, I'd like to be able to do that. Can I get a, a confirmation from members that you're happy for us to do that? Thank you very much. Um, moving on to item number three, which is the minutes. Um, so there are minutes of the previous Standards Committee that was held on the 21st of November. Um, so if members are happy for me to sign those off. Yep. There's a nods around the table. And then there are minutes of the hearing subcommittee. Again, um, uh, I, I wasn't there. Those that, that were are around this table, with the exception of Councillor Wardby, uh, and forgive me, I do have apologies from Councillor Warby. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on apologies in a moment. Um, uh, so those that were there, are you um, happy that they were uh, uh, correct? Yep. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, I, I have no urgent business uh, for this evening. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so we will, in a moment, move on to item number six. I was hoping that uh, our, um, our new uh, independent person, Rose Mazar, would be here. She, she isn't here. Um, but I will take at this point of the meeting just to um, run through some apologies. So we have apologies from Councillor Lomas, and she is substituted by Councillor Whitcroft. Councillor Whitcroft, thank you so much. It's good to have you with us. And I do have apologies from Parish Councillor Mark Wardby, who isn't able to be here this afternoon. Which runs us nicely into item number six, which is public participation. Uh, we have two uh, individuals that have registered to speak. Um, and uh, the first of those is Miss Gwen Swinburne. So Gwen, you know the drill, you know the timings, please just come and address us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Owen. By the way, thank you for putting urgent item at item five. It's been the goal for a long time. Um, thank you, Chair. I was looking forward to the follow-up report you requested on the members' new mandatory and optional training, which I noted was quietly deleted without explanation in this forward plan. Um, we pay over £800,000 to City of York councillors to represent us. The ongoing dysfunctional governance identified from the latest as well as the 2017 public interest reports and every local government association report required improved member induction and training. 
Despite face-to-face -face, dial in and catch up options, attendance was poor. The excuses proffered at the last meeting, particularly from long established councillors was deeply concerning and expected as if they knew it all. The indie person hit the nail on the head. Refresher courses are needed, even if things haven't changed, which they always have. Last meeting, the deputy monitoring officer was put on the spot over a suggestion to publish individual member attendance, which is done elsewhere. We have a right to know if our elected members are taking their responsibilities as they should. I expect you, as so often, will circle your wagons, so I have lodged an FOI today to extract this information. I mentioned this in the light of the Parish Council item directed by you, Chair, to be added to the forward plan. As we know, the wealthy outer wards benefit from an additional level of democratic governance, denied the inner wards for over a quarter of a century. It is inexplicable why this council isn't commissioning through its communities department a long overdue statutory citywide community governance review to consider parishing the inner wards as a minimum. I am raising this elsewhere. As the monitoring officer report states, parishes are an essential voice, which is great if you have one. We don't. So we in the inner wards shouldn't be subsidizing the city of York council work, which denies us a voice and resources. Finally, in view of our financial difficulties, I'd like to understand which services provided by city of York council to parishes are non-statutory, so can be reasonably recharged to those parish councils to remedy at least the financial inequality meanwhile. Thank you, chair. As a rider, can I ask whether there should be um, declarations of interest from the twin hatted members on this item on the parish councils today? Just asking. Uh, thank you, Gwen. Mm. Your points have been noted. Um, I, can I just answer that? Um, the members will have declared in a declaration of interest. Um, just to reassure members, so as long as that's on your declaration of interest form. Please. As long as that is on the member's declaration of interest form, um, then that doesn't need to be re-declared. Which brings me very nicely onto my uh, our second public speaker. So our second public speaker is Council Waters, who had registered to speak. Um, I need at this point to explain to you that I am a parish councillor on Osbaldwick Parish Council, and, uh, and Osbaldwick Parish Council are mentioned in the submission that that, that he has uh, he has given us so um the protocols um allow for a written submission if you know you're not able to make the meeting okay um at the discretion of the chair um public speakers that aren't able to make the meeting and haven't submitted a written submission before the 5 p.m deadline which is two working days before the meeting the chair has a discretion to allow that written submission to be submitted and to be passed out to members of the committee it doesn't allow for the chair um, unless there are extenuating circumstances to read that particular statement so i have a statement here a submission from councillor waters which i will pass to members and we will look at this at the relevant time when we when we look at the um at the complaints uh, register um but it's important that you know as parish councillors sorry forgive me as, as members of, of this committee that i am a parish councillor on this parish that is in my declaration of interest but just for transparency i wanted to make sure that you were aware of that here um councillor pavovic thank you chair um i should probably know this um, given how much time i've spent on the constitution um, but is that written into the constitution that it's not allowed to be read out? Because, for example, in planning, um, it's, it is read out. Yeah. Um, so um, if it's been accepted de facto as, um, as public participation, why is, um, why is uh, it not allowed to be um, then read out? Very, very good question. And we have the answer for you, Councillor Pavlovic, which Lindsay is going to give you. So, Councillor, the public participation protocol, uh, there are two parts to it. 
Um, and so one part deals specifically with planning and licensing, and the rules there are slightly different because of the nature of those committees and the applications that we are determining. And um, so that does allow for written submissions to be read out. Um, it can be at the discretion of the chair, but it's to ensure that both sides are heard fairly. It's different for our ordinary committees um, and the rules are quite clear. And so um, someone was registered to public participation by 5 p.m. two working day before the meeting. Um, they are, can either attend in person or they're offered remote attendance. Um, if they are not able to do that, they can submit a written submission by 5 p.m. two working days before the committee. And that written submission will be published as part of the agenda papers. In this case, the written submission came in this morning. So... Um, that that um that individual was that council was registered to speak as a public participant was offered the chance to join remotely was asked for a written submission by 5 p.m two working days before the meeting um and the written submission came in this morning so the chair has exercised discretion in terms of how he deals with that uh if i'm and again if i'm i yeah. we will come to you but i can michael um uh, it, it, i i sought advice from senior officers as to how to deal with this and that there have been in previous committees there have been occasions where the chairs of those committees have read out statements but there have been um, extenuating circumstances that have led to the chair making the decision to read it out i have sought advice from our officers um, and have been uh, informed that they don't find any extenuating circumstances in this submission that will allow me to, to, to read it out. That's kind of where, where we're at with it, Joe. Chair, it's it's a bureaucratic governance question. This document... Sorry, Joe, I, can you speak up? Sorry, I, it's, I, I, it's, it's if a I can't yeah. hear you, I'm sure that I'll... It's a bureaucratic governance question. Yeah, yeah. This piece of paper refers to business from the committee in a subcommittee which led to a report of the full committee. My question is, as the rest of the documentation is not all in the public sphere, should this be a confidential item? I, I, I would... So, once a, once a case has been heard mm -hmm. and a decision has been um, communicated um, to all parties, the the confidentiality remains... A member can, if they wish, choose to forego that confidentiality and speak in a public session about that particular case. And there we have that we have had occasions both here at Joint Standards and wider where members have actually done that. They've exercised their rights to forego anonymity and have spoken up about a particular case. So, so using that guidance. Um, uh, this, the, 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 the confidentiality of this particular case, um, the, the, the member has, has essentially foregone his confidentiality by bringing it into the public domain. Yeah. Chair, in that case, does that not mean all of the documentation related to the case should be in the public domain? Because this is a document in isolation from everything else associated with the case. And that's why I was saying, is it a thing that should be discussed in the confidential part of the agenda effectively to determine what is or isn't in the public domain? Thank you, Joe. So so the, the subcommittee minutes that we've just approved address this particular complaint. OK, so that is in the public domain. All right. Um, as far as uh, as discussing this is concerned, I did say that we would be discussing this in the closed confidential session. So we will have an opportunity to air this privately. Um, and again, just in the interest of, of transparency and openness for this particular submission to be on an agenda, because it's been because it's been submitted to us after the deadline. We're not able to put this on as an agenda item and have it. However, we will be offering this particular member the opportunity to make this submission with enough deadline for it to be printed in its entirety at the next meeting, should that member wish to do so. Councillor Rawlings. Thank you, Chair. Chair, there's a slight moot point, really, because I think all members have done. If this has been accepted as public participation, then we should actually have this knowledge base at this point in the meeting and discuss it later in private session but members should take a point. It's public participation taking place. Therefore, they should read these at this point of the meeting and not later. 
I, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. The protocol that the City of York Council have agreed does not allow us to do that. Um, there is there is an opportunity for the chair to use their discretion, um, but that is done on advice from senior officers. The advice that I have received from senior officers is that there is no extenuating circumstances that will allow us to, to effectively breach the protocols to allow me to read this out in public. And that's the line that I'm taking. Sorry, Chair, I wasn't asking you. Really <laughs> Sorry. I'm literally just saying that it's public participation. We should read this at this stage, but no, no comment because we wouldn't normally in a public participation do so and then make the comments in private session later. I think in protocols, I'm quite happy with it. OK. Um, and I, I I now understand what you're saying, Councillor. Uh, well, forgive me if I misunderstood that. Um, I mean, if members wish to spend a few moments reading the submission and not commenting on it, I'm more than happy for you to do that. Is that the will of, of members or do you want to read it and, and, and comment it in private session? I'm, I'm more than comfortable, whichever. So, uh, again, thank you for your patience, members. So just on the advice of, of, of the senior officer, so so we can't take this as public participation because the protocols that govern public participation have not been adhered to. So therefore, even though we're discussing it at this particular agenda item, or I, I've taken a discretionary decision to allow this to be printed and submitted in a written form to members of this committee. And as I said right at the beginning, we will discuss this in the confidential forum. And unless any member has any serious reasons why we shouldn't do that, I, I think we'll move on. OK, so thank you very much, uh, members, and thank you for those uh, who are watching remotely. Um, we're now going to move on to item number seven, um, which is uh, parish council engagement. And uh, you have a, uh, a report there at uh, page 15. I'm going to say yes. So uh, if, if you're all at that point, um, I'll just invite uh, Lindsay to speak to that uh, that item, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So, members, the report's in front of you. Um, so you wanted to understand how we engage with parishes and um, what those mechanisms are. So I've set out there. Um, kind of where you know the what those mechanisms are, how what they what exists currently, um, what you know the discussion that we've been having, and um, trying to get those closer relationships with the parish councils through um, the local association. Um, I've been to parish liaison meeting before just before Christmas and had a really productive um, discussion with um, members on that that group as well about how we will interact with parishes. So that's kind of in a more of a, a wider. Um, scope, but specifically on standards. So, you know, we we do have parish council reps on um, on joint standards, um, and we do work with the clerks. Um, I think there's some work we can do around code of conduct and standards training um, with parishes and with parish clerks, and that's a piece of work that we can pick up and look at and work with the local association on that. But essentially, I think we have a pretty good. Um, relationship with council with the parish councils. I think we have plenty of mechanisms to engage with them and to work with them. Uh, looking at doing things a little bit differently in terms of uh, the governance side of things, but in terms of standards, um, you know, it, it's for you to decide whether you feel that's sufficient, whether you think there should be more you might want to do. But you know that we've set out there what currently exists, and um, I think from our perspective, it, it looks pretty okay. You know, the the interaction we have with count, parish councils is. It's fine in terms of the parish council complaints. Um, you know, 
uh, we have a mechanism for dealing with them and parish councillors will sit on, reps will sit on those assessments and hearings where that's required. Um, so I think I haven't really got much to say other than what's in the report, so I'll hand it over to, to the chair. Okay, so I see three hands. I didn't see them all go up in particular order, so forgive me. I'm, I'm going to go um, with Councillor Chambers, then uh, Councillor Pavlik, and then Councillor Lundsman. Yours was the last hand, I saw. Okay. Chair, thank you so much. Um, yeah, okay. it was an interesting read. I am just wondering whether uh, the title might be better extended to read parish council and non-parish ward engagement because it does appear mm. that there is a potential vacuum uh, that exists between uh, the democracy services mm. and the wards, mm -hmm. which uh, engages with parish councils, and we all have a lot to learn, um, but it doesn't appear that the that non-parish wards are engaged in the same manner. And I just wonder whether we might want to uh, look at extending this uh, engagement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, no, a really good point. Um, is that supplementary? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Whitcroft. Thank you, Chair. Yes, as a councillor for uh, a non-parish ward, I, I very much echo those remarks. I would say that often uh, in non-parish wards, we sort of improvise without a parish council. Uh, so in my ward, I've assembled a ward team, is what we call. So it involves chairs of residence associations, the PCSO, uh, local community leaders, and I find that's uh, an adequate solution as well. So there is something there beyond just the, uh, the ward councillors that could potentially be engaged with in that way. So thank you for bringing that up. No, thank you. Very much, um, Councillor Pavlovic, and then Councillor Runciman. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, I realise now I perhaps should have made a declaration at the beginning of the meeting because I chair the parish liaison meeting, uh, the quarterly parish liaison meeting that you, that's referenced in the um, in the report. So. Um, um, and it is a, a very useful, um, it's a very useful opportunity to, um, to hear from um, chairs of parish councils um, and um, pick, up on, um, pick up on issues that are relevant to, to, to both of us. The democratic deficits, um, if you like, um, within the non-parished areas, I think is something that really does need mm. to, to be mm. taken into account. Um, notwithstanding um, the, the the importance of of of, of, of regular discussions, it's also the um, the opportunities that parishes have um, to be able to influence what what goes on in that. Um, in that ward or in that um, locality, so you know, I, I very much think it is something that um, should be should be explored um, should be explored further through um, a community governance review, which I understand um, hasn't taken place in the city of York for many a long year. Yeah, a good idea. Lovely, thank you, uh, Councillor Fisher. Is that a supplementary to, or is it? I mean, okay. one area Saving where, the best to last, Carol. Uh, sorry, sorry. To <laughs> one of the areas where I think this would benefit the inner awards is to give more uh, scope for things like training for people on the yeah. planning committees. Because yeah. at the moment, right. if anyone joins my parish council or town council planning committee, we ask them to undergo a, a, a modicum of training with the local Yorkshire Local Council Association. The ward members may have experience outside that, you know, what committee members, but they may not have had access to formal training. And I think it's absolutely vital that we increase the involvement and the expertise within the inner parishes to, you know, to enable them to contribute constructively and helpfully to the governance of the city. I think mm -hmm. it's, and yeah, and, you know, and, and also in things like organising neighbourhood plans, which are absolutely vital in my area for all communities to get mm -hmm. them done. Um, and I think, you know, it's the biggest democratic deficit in the cities that we do have the uh, central areas on parish. And it also offers the possibility for those people to support the work of the war councillors, not in a political sense, but in a practical yeah. sense. Yeah. OK, thanks. Um, and, and then final. Sorry. Oh, is that a supplementary? Sorry. Keep it on hold. Uh, Councillor Rawlings. Yeah, I, I, 
I'm sure uh, we should really talk about this in forward plan as well. And yeah, something I, back I've got it there. down to do that. Uh, yeah. and, and really the key point there is can we come up with something which is best practice? What yeah. I'm hearing is absolutely right. The, the city centres don't have that level and that localness of de democracy that the parish councils have, which needs to be addressed. But I'm also hearing that whilst it works in all the different areas, there's no kind of formal structure to it of best practice. It's something which councillors are coming up with and maybe we could come up with some kind of document that gives them some guidance yeah. on best practice and how to do it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good, a good point. Okay. Any supplements before I go to Councillor Runciman? I'm afraid Joe. so. I think there, that there are formal structures for the inner city wards. They're called ward committees because I know of their existence. I'm not quite sure how evenly their processes work and I'm not sure how well they are um, sorted in governance terms, but in at least some places, technically ward committees exist. Now, whether they can be a proxy for a parish uh, is another, you know, for a parish council is another matter, um, but they, I have come across a circumstance in which it has been relevant lately. Thank you, Joe. And again, just, just for clarification, um, I, for members of the public, if nobody else, so, so the current ward committee structure is the ward councillors or councillor is the ward committee. Um, so if you have a single member ward, the ward committee is that particular ward councillor. Um, and, 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 and part of how we look at um, this, this, this governance deficit, you know, maybe we could look at how ward committees work. And I think it's a very valid point. Um, uh, clearly, Councillor Whitcroft's ward ward committee is 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 set up very very well and we've seen examples of that across the city um uh so uh, i i will have the last word in a moment but i want to pass on to my learned colleague and friend carol uh councillor runciman uh, councillor runciman thank you i just pick up the points before i make the one that i want to make um i think that the democratic deficit is very obvious but i need to say to joe that a parish council is elected and a ward committee isn't. Yeah. You never know who's coming to a ward committee until they walk through the door. So you bake 40 buns and 10 people turn up. Um, so it, it's not democratic at all. Even if it's an uncontested election, we're still elected. Yeah, yeah. So you're either elected, either um, opposed or not, or you could be co-opted, which is another category. Um, I think that what uh, Stuart says is absolutely right. I think uh, the training thing is is one that really bothers me. Uh, both my parish councils, uh, the clerk is very good at circulating YLCA's training opportunities. Mm. Uh, and sometimes they're taken up and sometimes they're not. But certainly um, in the past, we have invited parish councils to some of our induction training. And I don't think we did that this year. But I think if there's any training going on, it, it would be good to have, say, you and the proper officer to have a look and see whether it's suitable to invite parish council councillors to. Yeah. And particularly, as Councillor Fisher says, to planning, because that is obviously the one that um, exercises their minds the most. Uh, the last thing I want to say is on page 17 in the bullet points. I think it should be made very clear that some of us are members of parish councils. I've been a member of a parish council for 25 years. And you say, um, you know, we can attend them. We don't attend them because it's out of the kindness of our heart. We're actually members and we turn up. And there are several of us, are there not, who are members as well. So I think that should be a separate point made on there regularly attend parish council meetings as members or as uh, ward councillors. And both my parish councils have a slot at the beginning of the meeting where the ward councillors can give a report on what they have been doing or any concerns they have. And members of the parish council can bring up any concerns that they have to the ward councillor if they happen not to have brought them up with them already. If I, sorry, I will bring you in, and if I can just slightly, uh, and, and I'm humbled to it. So, 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 for example, I have five parishes in my ward. Yes. I am an elected parish councillor on two of them. 
as the document says, I attend the other three. I am not a de facto member of the parish council. I attend parish council as a non-parish councillor to to help and advise. Exactly. They say, yeah, five. So I so 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 you're you're right in in, in so for yourself, obviously you you know, you, but you're not. I think it's important that you're not automatically a member of a parish council if that parish sits within your ward um for you to be a member of that parish council you will go, need to go through the process council huntsman's mentioned that you're either elected at an election elected and opposed or co-opted onto that and uh, so so i think in a sense it's right but it probably needs a little bit more in that you know parish yeah. council you know uh, uh, ward councillors as a member or a ward uh, council exactly yeah, yeah. so just the, the wording maybe needs to be tweaked tweaked yeah. a little bit lindsay sorry Sorry, I was just going to explain. Yeah, it was written for you as City of York councillors, not as parish councillors. And I understand that many of you are parish councillors, but yeah. it was written specifically to you as an audience of City of York councillors. But appreciate absolutely a lot of you are dual hatted uh, and will sit on you know, one or more parish councils within your area. Absolutely. Good. Um, and uh, so thank you. Any, anybody else? I'm just carefully conscious of time. I want to move it on. Thank you for the report. Um, I think it's it, it's given us a lot. To, to look at there are a few tweaks that we need to put in there and we will put it on the work plan when we look at the work plan a little bit later particularly councillor chambers with your excellent uh comments uh about uh about you know the the, the non-parish um wards uh and, and i would like to know um it's easy for me to sit in a in a ward where i've got lots of parish councils i almost forget that there are wards that don't have but it would be really good to see how they work and possibly a piece of work that we could do as a committee is to see how we can find best practice and, and then recommend to full council formally looking at how we constitute the um, the ward committees, for example, because at the moment it's a very kind of grey area. You know, your ward committee it, it, it's the ward committee meetings that council has referred to where she bakes 10 buns, 40 buns only gets 10 turn up. She does have my phone number, by the way, if that ever happens again. Um, sorry, Councillor Huntsman, did you want to? Yes, it has been done before. And I would think if we look back in the records, um, we struggled when I was chair of stands, which is a bit back, as they say, um, with what to do about ward committees and how we can make them more democratic. So you might be able to dig out what Council. happened before and see if you can build on it. I'm not sure it was exactly the perfect solution, but it certainly has been considered before. Lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and members, thank you for your excellent input in that particular agenda item. It will go on the on the workflow when we look when we look at that. OK, so uh, moving us on to uh, agenda item number eight, uh, which, which is the review of the work plan. Um, so you have that there in front of you. And uh, um, I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that we that, you know, we, we need to put on onto the the, um, the items that we've just discussed, um, it, but it's whereabouts that sits. Um, thank you. <laughs> you can see me flustering there. Thank you very much, Jane. Um, so uh, so the next meeting is on the 6th of March. Um, we, we, we do have the draft report that we will have to look at. Um, generally, that is not a huge agenda item. Um, uh, I, I am I am I am keen for us to look at the because it because it has, as has been mentioned earlier, it has slipped off the work, the work plan. Um, was the, was, the, was a training update so I, so I would like a training update for the 6th of March um that's going to make that a busy enough meeting on the 6th of March can I can I then look at at, 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 at the April meeting um where we where we look at the, the that, that kind of um parish council piece parish stroke not council what was the wording that you used because it was brilliant it was Non-parished wards. Non wards. So, I, I think I think if we can have something at the April meeting, that would be really really helpful. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think. I, but I, yeah, I, I think we should look at it as a whole. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, Lizzie. Can I just remind them about the remit of this committee, which is joint standards? So specifically, we need to be looking at the standards and. 
that aspect. Um, I would suggest that anything wider than that should perhaps sit with in a different forum, but yeah, just be mindful of the remit of the committee. Mm -hmm. One thing that always strikes me as someone who isn't a councillor, some things come to a committee, i.e. this one, and the, the reaction is sometimes not here. And the problem with that is, what does that committee then do with it? And there are two options. One is to say, not here, and stop. And the other is to say, not here, but here is what we're going to say about it in order to pass it on to wherever it is relevant. And I think that step is quite important. So I think it would be perfectly reasonable for the chair to decide, because it does impact on our business, that he would like to write a report for whoever it should be written to from this committee saying, we accept it's not our linear responsibility, but it's it's obiter dicta. It's something else that's come up at the meeting and it should be looked at formally by the council in the right venue. Yeah. So so thank you, Joe. So so scrutiny is where, where that would sit. Um so I think I think I I, I take Lindsay's point that we need to be careful that we don't stray outside of our remit as the joint standards. However, as part of our overall piece, there are certain things that we can recommend to the relevant committee who would then have that on their agenda to can carry it forward and take it forward. But, but I think have it, it's been highlighted here, mm -hmm. and I think it would be re remiss of us not to act upon it and then put something together that we can then pass forward to a, to a scrutiny committee to look at uh, as, as it goes up the chain. Is that... Are we okay with that? So if we if we had that on the April on the April, so so what are we asking democratic services to do coming back to us on the eighth of April? What are we what are we asking them to do? Because yes, it's an agenda item, but how do we want that to look like? Councillor Rawlings. Chair, yeah, just just one quick thing. I think part of our role and how this crossover does, I, I don't disagree that it ultimately sits with scrutiny. However, part of our role is to make sure that things are clear across the city and across the parish councils to ensure that standards are not broken in, in decisions that are being made. So I do think there's a crossover, and I think it's absolutely yeah. right that yeah, we yeah. start by doing some work here before it's passed the scrutiny for decisions. Yeah. Because clearly there, is, there, are, there are weaknesses. Um, sorry, your question, the comment. <laughs> so what do we want datum to look like in April when it comes back? I mean, what are we asking how, how I would, services how I would to do? say it was... Uh, ask the officers to come forward with a review as to how democratic engagement takes place in all parish and unparish areas within the city. And then we've got some kind of guidance as to how mixed the picture is to start with, and maybe to have some kind of suggestions as to how that can be improved and more uniformly engaged across the, across the piece. That's Good. where I would see it. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Any, any other comments, members? I guess it's just a, a development now, which is one, the the organisation, the, the, the officers, describe the issue and produce their version of bullet points about the things that need to be looked at. The committee then adds on to that one or two of the bullet points they think that should be added on to it. And that can then be referred to as a document which says, here are the things that, that we believe in, in the terms of this committee. It would be helpful if these were clarified or developed and then pass that on to whoever should clarify and develop. But give the committee the chance to add their own bullet points, rather than having a very complicated paper, because you're not trying to come to an endpoint conclusion, you're trying to yeah. work out what the issues are for someone else to deal with. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, so uh, so I think the workflow is 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 is, is good. Does, any, does anybody have any other thing that they particularly want to look at in the April meeting? Councillor Rawlings. I just wanted to come back very briefly because I couldn't earlier on the training issue. You've said, Chair, you're going to defer that because the paper wasn't ready. Now, I wasn't at the last meeting, so I couldn't comment under the minutes as to the truth, but there was an action point on this to engage with group leaders and whips uh, in the last minutes. Did that take place? I, I, I didn't engage with group leaders and whips, so I... That that action didn't take place from me, uh, um, so I couldn't comment on the minutes. Yeah, no, no, that's fine because I was at the meeting. Yeah, but now we're talking about reassessing it on the work plan. Now I can. So there was a, a minute in there that says the chair would write to group leaders and whips and ask them to remind members of the requirements of training 
if that hasn't taken place, then we can can we make sure that happens in advance of that paper coming we back? We will, we will, and I will uh, encourage uh, democratic services to nudge me um, to ensure that we do do that. It's very easy to agree to do something, and as you move off into a, oh. another sphere, um, you, you 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 forget until you see the, the, the papers. But I can assure anybody watching that there was no deliberate no. Um, intention to kind of fudge or or cover over that uh, that 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 that, that missing a missing item. Um, Joe, chair, I hate to drag it out further, but in another place within the organisation, we have made some progress in developing an action list, and that the issue of an action list is. You don't forget things because at the next meeting, if a member thinks should be something should be on the action list and it isn't, they can say so. And once it's on the action list, it stays there until it's resolved and you have sure. it. So it shouldn't be up to you to remember everything. Thanks, Joe. You, sh you should be nudged if it's on an action list because an officer is responsible for nudging you, or it would come back. Here a council member has said, ah, this has been missed. And it should have been easier for him because he should have been able to look at an accident to say it's not on the action list. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but it's a very valid point and and something that we can uh, we can we can take forward. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm, gonna, I'm mindful of time, um, and unless there's any pressing comments about the uh, the work plan, we're gonna move on to the next uh, agenda item. Um, uh, so the next uh, agenda item is uh, agenda item number nine. Uh, which is the monitoring officer's uh, report on complaints received. So we have a, a a public set of public papers that are not named, and then we have a set of private papers that are. I'm going to ask um, uh, Lindsay to address us or to speak to the unnamed um, papers, uh, and then we'll break uh, and go into a closed session to discuss the uh, the the confidential and again if i can just remind members that if you want to discuss uh the uh, uh report that's that's in the public domain please be mindful not to mention names or uh, or give away any uh, confidential information uh, Lindsay. okay um so members um if we um look in turn at the complaint log um so i'm looking at case reference 2023/13 slash um, so that um, complaint has now, um, the investigation has concluded. I have now seen the investigation report. Um, I've approved the final report. And so I've asked um, the Democratic Services team to um, convene a hearing. Um, so we will be contacting all parties involved to get that arranged. Uh, so that one is progressing. Um, in terms of the next one, 2023-14, um, I have been asked by the Investigating Officer for Commission to uh, extend by four weeks uh, just because of the um, capacity issues within the team uh, that investigating officer would like um, so approval to defer well um, to ad add an additional four weeks onto the time scale for starting that investigation um, so that is request that I think we need the um, committee to um, confirm it's happy with um, Thanks, I mean, sorry, so, sorry. My, sorry so my only comment on that is that uh, we, we have in the past allowed um, the dispensation of the three months to go further for for, for, for reasons that have been stated. Um, I'm just aware that we have been in a situation around this table in the past, and some members will recall that we've had situations where it it, it almost became, uh, you know, it's kind of six, seven, eight, nine months. So whilst I'm mindful to agree to the extension, I would just yeah, need to make sure that we're not going to allow a situation that we had previously. So. That, that's all it was. Absolutely, thank thank yeah, you, Lindsay. Absolutely, no, we will ensure that we do get that started within the next couple of weeks. Yes. Um, and then 2023 slash 21, um, that um, complaint was assessed by subcommittee this week. I think it was yesterday. <laughs> it was yesterday. So that has now been assessed. Uh, so the outcome of that will be um, communicated to uh, the relevant parties. Um, uh, and then 2023-23, um, that has now been complete. So I understand that one has now been um, signed off and um, completed. Um, and that's that's them all, Chair. So unless members want to speak about individual cases in detail. So again, does anybody want to speak on the public document you've got in front of you before we go into closed session? Nope. 
Okay, so we are now going to go into our private closed session. Can I just say for those of you that are watching that we will not be coming back. So, uh, so, so we will we will have our meeting uh, in in private, and and then the, the meeting will conclude. So, uh, please don't be waiting for us to come back to close the meeting publicly. From a public point of view, that that has now closed. Thank you for watching. <laughs>